Okay, you're welcome in. It's science. And the topic is circulatory system. I am teacher Joshua Philemon of Barney Schools. You're warmly, warmly welcome. So circulatory system is a topic in grade five of this, uh, of the previous curriculum, which is actually uh, um, you who are in grade seven right now, this is the last, uh, the, the, last the last class for this curriculum, and we won't be using this, uh, we won't be using this curriculum any longer for primary schools. But currently, this topic is in class six. Now, the circulatory system, let's get started. <clears throat> the circulatory system is like the board, the transport system. The country has its own system of transport. It has roads, it has roads, it has, it has uh, power stations, uh, it has um, 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 bus stops. All those make the so-called transport system, which has lakes uh, and oceans through which ships uh, travel, mm -hmm. it has airlines uh, through where uh, the aeroplanes travel, so that's the transport system. Now, your body dwells have the transport system, not lots, not roads, not, uh, not power stations, not airlines, not lakes, but uh, your body has the transport system. It has blood. Your, your blood carries nutrients. Your blood carries hormones, oxygen, mm, waste products such as carbon dioxide to different parts of the body. So, that's the circulatory system. So the circulatory system works as the transport system in your body. <clears throat> uh -huh. Now let's talk about the blood. Blood uh, is made up of different components. And some of these you see here are the components of blood. What you see right here are the red blood cells. These are the red blood cells. Now, um, the blood is transported through the blood vessels and it's made up of four main components. Component number one, plasma. Plasma is a pale yellow liquid, which has salt, glucose, and all other components which the blood carries from one place to another, like hormones, all those make up the so-called plasma. Now, some people may think that plasma is red in, red in color. No, plasma is not red in color. Plasma is pale yellow. By pale, it's namanisha rangi ambo inatifia. Pale rangi inatifia. Now, it, it also has the red blood corpuscles uh, or red blood cells, RBCs, RBCs, which are scientifically known as erythrocytes erythrocytes. Uh -huh. These are the red blood cells and actually these are the ones which make the blood red. Now, um, these RBCs have the main function of carrying oxygen from the lungs to all other body parts where oxygen is needed. Those are the RBCs. Your blood, red blood cells do not live so long. They die after a couple of months and some of them do not reach even three months, but some manage to reach three months, and after that, they all die. So um, those red blood cells which have died or those which have been worn out are replaced by the red, uh, the red bone marrow, the red bone marrow. Yeah, so that's about red blood cells. Now let's talk about other components of blood. Other components of blood are white blood corpuscles, which are also called white blood cells, or scientifically, leukocytes. Leukocytes. Leukocytes are, are the white blood cells. Their work is fighting germs. Their work is fighting germs. And how do they fight germs? When the germs get into your body, they concentrate on a certain point in your body and get their fight. Some of the white blood cells do die in that fight, so, um, and, and the germs do die. So what happens is that when you have, for example, a wound, mm, what will happen is that those white blood cells which have died and the germs which have died together will form pus. So pus 
we saw is a combination of white blood cells which have died and dead germs. You also have platelets, which are there to enable your blood to clot in case of an injury when you have lost a lot of blood. So um, blood has to clot so that to pre prevent you from losing more blood. Actually, if clotting wasn't possible, it means that people would, have, would be dying. And people whose blood doesn't clot have a disease called hemophilia. Uh, hemophilia. Hemophilia. People with hemophilia have blood which cannot clot easily. We also have, uh, um, uh, these platelets are responsible for secreting a chemical called, called riboflavin, which is responsible for prevent, I mean, for enabling blood to clot. Yeah. And um, platelets, as their name suggests, they have a plate-like shape. Yeah. Now back to this slide. So I've said these disc-like uh, cells are red blood cells, and these ones are white blood cells. Yeah. So now a quiz. If you can answer question number one, raise up your hand, and I will I will allow to allow you turn on your microphone and give us the answer. Rosa, Rosa number one. Rosa, you're welcome. Turn on your microphone and tell us the answer of number one. Mentioned two components of past. Dead germs mm -hmm. and dead blood cells. Only Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Number two. Number two. Who can answer number two? Yes, here I can see the hand of Asma Shemsanga. Turn on your microphone, Asma. Yes. Red okay. blood cells or erythrocytes, white blood cells or, or leukocytes, platelets or thrombocytes and plasma. Oh, great. Fantastic. That's, those are the, that's the summary of the four components of, of blood. Number three. Number three, you can help us with number three. Number three. Idope. Hey, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Idofe, where is Idofe? I saw the hand of Idofe. Oh, okay, anyway. Rosa again. Rosa. Oxhemoglobin. What? Oxhemoglobin. Yes, oxyhemoglobin. Oxyhemoglobin is the answer. Thank you. Aha, uh -huh. number four. Number four, number four, number four. Who can answer number four? Number four. Number four. Yes. Shemsanga. Shemsanga again. What is the shape of the red blood cells? This, they are disc mm -hmm. shaped. Disc shaped, yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Number five. Number five, number five. Boys, where are you? Number five, number five. Collins, yes, Collins. Collins. Vegetables, blood, transport mm -hmm. and to transport hormones. To transport hormones and transporting nutrients. Thanks a lot. That was the quiz. Um, let's go. Put nutrients. So nutrients. Uh huh. Um, secondly, it carries away waste products from all body parts. It carries away waste products from all body parts, and by waste products, we mean carbon dioxide, urea, excess salt, excess water. Those are all the waste which blood carry from one part of the body to another. Number three, it helps to defend us against diseases. Mm -hmm.
or number five carries hormones and other chemical substances which help help the body to function properly. So um, blood carries hormones, different body hormones which are very important, like the hormone thyroxine, which helps uh, digestion and other metabolic processes to take place very well. Mm -hmm. So that is called, uh, um, that, that, that's, that's the function of hormones. Now, hormones are important, and hormones are carried from one place of the body to another by blood. So let's talk about blood groups. We have four blood groups, and blood, people with blood group, we have blood group A, blood group B, uh -huh, blood group AB, and blood group O. Now, people with blood group A, blood group A, can donate blood, blood group A, can donate blood from people with blood group O and blood group A. Uh -huh. They can only receive blood from blood group O and A, but they can offer blood to blood group A and blood group AB. People with blood group B can donate blood to people with blood group B and blood group AB. And they can receive blood only from blood group O and blood group B. They cannot receive from, from AB. People with blood group AB can receive blood from blood group A, blood group B, blood group AB, blood group O. So they receive from all this. Therefore, people with blood group AB are known as universal recipients. Universal recipients. Hmm? People with blood group O can donate blood to people with blood group A, blood group B, 